Okay, 16. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so superficial thrombophlebitis, uh, often with people that have systemic inflammatory or, or coagulation issues. I, I don't think I've ever actually seen, well, maybe one time I saw this biopsy, but I don't often see it biopsy. I feel like it often gets recognized clinically. Um, and this is kind of interesting that there, most of what we're seeing here is actually like blood. See, they're actual erythrocytes. There is some a beginning of fibrin thrombus formation. I imagine this was probably a large kind of plug of fibrin thrombus where part of it was more solid. And this area was just kind of congealed blood stuck in the middle that hadn't fully turned into thrombus yet. But we know that must be a thrombus somewhere in here because there's no way a normal vessel is going to be this big in the subcutis. That is way, way bigger than any vessel should ever be at this level that I can think of. I've never seen a normal vessel that size at this location uh, in the, this level of the skin. So right away, that's abnormal. And like you said, um, even though from reading, again, I read up on this since I don't see it very often, you, you do often see some degree of inflammation associated with it. Although this one, I feel like is not much inflammation. There's reactive change around it. See, this is abnormal here. There's a little bit of inflammation. There's a lot of edema and fibrin and degenerative changes in the subcutis around the vessel because it's really irritated, I think, from the vessel expanding. But um, yes, polyarteritis nodosa should have really florid inflammatory component in the vessel wall and around it, and also will have an elastic laminate, will be an artery, whereas thrombophlebitis will be a vein. So that's going to be, if you needed to in real life, you could do a Virhoff von Giesen elastic stain to help prove it if you're having trouble. Um, but yeah, that's a, a nice example of something, like I said, that I don't usually see. So superficial thrombophlebitis.